Ivan Katz here at Bluemont Disc Golf Course, and it's just a crisp, cool fall day with beautiful leaves that I figured I'd come out and shoot a disc golf tutorial. I'm going to call it my Fall Colors Disc Golf Tutorial. So here we go. I'm going to start with all the white tees, that's intermediate, and go to the silver closer baskets. And along the way, I'm going to tell you which discs I'm throwing, why I'm throwing them, I'm going to discuss the characteristics of each disc. I'm going to discuss those numbers on the discs. What do they all mean? We'll get into that. And also I'm going to talk to you about the techniques of throwing. I throw most of my shots with the right hand forehand, but I also throw some backhand shots. So we'll cover it all and we'll talk about which discs can work for you and why they work for you. And hopefully we'll have a lot of fun along the way too. Let's get started. Number one here at Bluemont, all the way up this hill. It's actually 312 feet. The tee pad is all the way over here. That's the white intermediate tee pad and through these tight trees and all this trouble area up here, up the hill, tough. Let's see if we can make it happen. Okay, that was a nice drive with the Crank SS here. Got me through the trouble areas and right on the fairway so I can get up the hill to the basket here, which is still a good, ah, I don't know, 90, 100 feet away maybe. Tough end uphill. Okay, wrapping up number one through the drive with my Crank SS over stable. And I compensate for that by giving it maybe a hair bit of Anheuser. And uh, it works for me. Got me through the fairway there and on my way up the hill where I really tried to run the birdie putt and uh, hit the basket with my Cobra. The Cobra is a great disc. And like I say, you can use it for the entire course. But in this case, I just kept the basket in my sights used my body and my knowledge of the disc, threw it with a bit of hyzer, straightened up and ran right for the basket and hit it but didn't go in for the easy drop in. Also remember when you're throwing uphill to give it a little more power than you would for a flat shot because you gotta really drive it to get it up that hill and get it to where it's going. There you go, you can't get them all. Now another great disc golf tip is to have bright colored discs like this one. Look at all these leaves, you know, it's, uh, it's tough out here. People lose a lot of discs this time of year and you want bright colored discs. So definitely bear that in mind when you're purchasing your discs. This color is pretty easy to find in just about any season. Also don't forget to bring a towel so you can keep your hands and your discs clean. It's a must. Number two, 193 feet, straight uphill, and a lot of problems along the way. It's tough. Definitely the tricky way to do it, going through those trees, but it worked. And I'm straight up in the center of the path. I would have liked to have gotten a better skip, but oh well, should be close enough for a birdie. Okay, wrapping up number two, started off with my Flippy Wraith. It's a DX plastic, the cheapest. Get yourself DX discs when you're just starting out. They cost less and they tend to wear in nicely over the years. They can get overworn, so you might have to replace them eventually, but they're pretty much unbreakable and really cheap to get into for you beginners. All right, so started off with some hyzer there and let the Flippy nature Flippy is synonymous with understable. Let the understable nature of this disc turn it over and get me through those trees. Now, how do you get through obstacles? Well, it's simple. If you're trying to avoid a tree, don't look at the tree. I looked straight through the trees. I looked where I wanted the disc to go and my body and my arms and my brain got it there. Now for you right hand backhand throwers, that can be pretty tough because you start off like this and you're trying to go around the tree. You have to put 
perhaps a lot of Anheuser in your throw when you're throwing to get around those trees to the outside and curve around this way. But anyway, for the flick, it's a little bit easier, but I didn't go the normal path of curving around those trees. I decided to go for that tight little gap between those trees because it's the straight line and for me it's much easier and it worked out well for me for the fairly easy birdie. My Hex Rakuten is a very dependable disc. It's really a hammer, goes a really nice distance, and I can get it really to do anything. But in this case, threw it low and in control, just turns over slightly and really, really goes straight on down the path. And uh, really close to the basket here for an easy birdie. And it's really tough to navigate this hill, but the Hex Rakuten here made it quite easy. Nice job with my Paul Macbeth Champion Rock 3 of getting me down this hill and it sort of came on down here and curved over this way and just ended up right over here with the fade at the end. So nice drive there and really just simple putt for birdie. Okay, wrapping up number three here, and I'm showing you two shots. Why? Well, most people would throw something like this Champion Rock 3 here, and for me, it's actually overstable. So that means it's going to curve off this way. But what I did is I definitely gave it some compensation, threw it flat, and it was able to get down and then get a little bit left of my target and curve back beautifully. And uh, set me up for a really nice birdie. But if you look at the shot with the Hex Rakuten here, it's a straighter disc for me. And even though it's really for distance, sometimes I can throw these in different ways, whether for long putts with my right hand backhand, or in this case with a flick kept very low and in control. This one tends to turn over. If you throw it for power and distance, turns over and S curves out as it should. But to keep it under control, I threw it low and it went right down the path and straight right towards the basket and for me, equally as effective. So don't listen to what everybody else throws out there. Throw what works for you. Go out into a field, practice your shots, pick a target, and don't always go for the most distance. Sometimes you want to throw 200, 220 feet and be very accurate. That is definitely an important shot in disc golf and with discs like the mid-range rock and my mid-range cobra and even this hex rakuten here and discs like the destroyer and the valkyrie they're some of my best approach discs so throw what works for you and practice in a field to make it perfect number four is a little bit tricky it's a dog leg right but you've got really this is a super problem tree on the way for me and uh the white tee is right there, so you've got to get through here, avoid all these trees, avoid that tree, and uh, get on up towards the basket. As a point of reference, the basket is actually right about here, but you have a mandatory to go this way. So that's what makes it a tough dogleg right. Okay, number four here. Nice shot with my Crank SS. It's one of my go-to discs for a dog leg right. Throw it with a lot of hyzer and give it a lot of power and let it curve around. That's what I did for the easy drop-in birdie. Other discs I might use for that are the Destroyer and also certainly the Valkyrie. That's a definitely a nice dog leg right disc that I use often. Number five, 280 feet. Looks great today with these glorious trees, but um, you've got an out of bounds creek here to avoid and lots of trees along the way to make you go into that creek. So it's tougher than it looks.
nice shot with the Valkyrie to get me over the creek and through the troubled areas and probably outside of the circle 40 45 feet to the basket okay wrapping up number five started off with the Valkyrie and the Valkyrie is really a great disc for many many different types of throws for instance I can throw it with super hyzer and get it to dog leg right I can also throw it with lots of Anheuser and get it to curve around left. So vary the degree of hyzer for the amount of power that you have and also for the course. If you want it to turn right and you have a weak right hand back hand, well, you're gonna have to give it a lot of Anheuser this way. Vary that this way, okay? So that's how you do it with right hand back hand and with forehand flick. Anywhere on the spectrum. You can really get discs like the Valkyrie to do anything you want them to do. Check out my total review of just the Valkyrie elsewhere on YouTube. Now off to the Cobra Putter. Really nice disc. You can play the whole course with it. Check out my video of that one too. But in this case, great putt and got me into the basket for the birdie. Number six here looks easy, but it's not. You've got a lot of problems over here and over here. It's a very tight fairway. So let's see how we can do it. Okay, good result here with the Hex Rakuten. Probably just about at the circle, maybe a little over it. It's about 30. Three feet is the circle. I'm probably 35 feet, maybe 40. So that means you can jump putt outside of 10 meters. Okay, wrapping up number six, started with my Hex Rakuten. And I can throw this with varying degrees of hyzer. And actually I like when it goes the nice S pattern. But for this one, because there's a lot of troubled trees over on the left side, I gave it a little more hyzer to keep it more right, keep it out of trouble. And that's what it did, stayed out of trouble, down the fairway, center of the fairway for the very tough 35, 40 foot birdie. Now a quick disclaimer about my videos. Nobody's gonna come out here and shoot birdies all the time. This is a very difficult game, disc golf. I shoot these videos to give you tips and tutorials. That means I throw multiple discs and I wanna show you what each of these discs do. I have to come out here and shoot multiple shots. It's not like I'm getting birdie after birdie after birdie, so don't come out here and think that you're gonna do it. You will, with practice, throw aces and you will throw plenty of birdies, but it takes practice and that's my goal here, is to help you learn which discs to throw and how to throw them. Number seven, 259 feet. And uh, you have to go on either side of this tree and those trees right there from the white tee right here. Good shot here with the Valkyrie, and uh, well, the basket is tucked behind these trees here, but it is a makeable putt, although probably a 40, 45, 50 footer, probably. Okay, wrapping up number seven, started off with the Valkyrie, and threw it with a flick. Now. It's a hyzer flip disc. What does that mean? Well, if you throw it with hyzer, either with the forehand sidearm or right hand backhand or however you throw, that means it's going to turn up. That's a hyzer flip. It starts on a hyzer and flips up. That's a characteristic of an understable disc. Understable discs will turn over, okay? And if a disc turns over, that means it's understable. Now, this one is very broken in. What does that mean? Well, it tends 
to change its characteristics some. If it's a very overstable disc, perhaps it'll lose some of that overstability. And in this case, it is not as flippy as other Valkyries might be. So it's DX plastic. DX plastic is the cheapest entry level. So it's inexpensive to buy, great for beginners. It might be a little too much disc for a beginner. What does that mean? Well, it's a Speed 9. It's supposed to be a control driver, which means it should be easy for most players to throw. But if you don't have a lot of speed in your throw, you might want to lower yourself down to a disc like the Cobra, which is a mid-range. But basically, the lower the speed, the easier it is to throw. So Speed 9 is getting up there a little bit. It's not a 11, 12, or 13, or even 14. I think they make 15s as well these days. But you really need very strong arm to get those to turn over and do what you want to do. If you throw something that's too much disc for you, it's just going to fade off. If you flick, then it's just going to fade off this way. Or if you right hand backhand, then it's just going to fade off that way. So lower the speed of the disc if you're finding you're not getting the straightness and distance that you want. Also go out and do a field and practice. That will help too. But anyway, 9, 4, negative 2, and 2 are the actual numbers for this disc. Speed nine, four is the glide. There are higher gliding discs up to seven, but four has pretty good glide. And the negative two turn is the flip. The number at the end, two, is the fade. That means if you throw it right hand, flick, sidearm, then it's gonna fade off this way. If you throw it right hand, backhand like this, then it's gonna fade off that way. So learn those numbers. Learn what your discs do when you throw them. Don't listen to your friends. You gotta do what's right for you. Use those numbers to your advantage and figure out discs that will help you throw the best. Now on to the putter. It's an 86, certainly a rare one here. It was made in 1990. That's probably older than some of you people out there. But anyway, you can find these, an 86 putter, great disc. And when you're putting, you wanna just look at your target you want to give it the power, come out from your core. You'll see a lot of people when they putt, especially the pros, every putt looks the same. And that's what you should strive for. It's very impressive. I don't think my form is all that regular. I do vary it depending on the distance and certain angles that I need. And this time I had to get around those trees, but I gave it all I could give it, threw it right for the basket, knowing that would fade off left a little bit, got a little help from a branch, and got me the birdie here on seven. On to the next one. Number eight, 248 feet, straight down from the white tee here, intermediate, and uh, trouble trees on either side, so you gotta stay to the fairway and try to get as far and as straight as you can. There's a path over here, and that is out of bounds, and a one-stroke penalty. Plus, even further, if you really turn it over over here, there's a creek, so that's double trouble. Nice drive with my Crank SS, got me straight down the fairway and away from all the trouble. I'm a bit behind this tree right here, but still I think I can see the basket, which is a good eh, 50 feet away probably. Okay, wrapping up number eight, I started with my Crank SS. I love this disc. It's certainly uh, tough disc to throw unless you have very good power. I'm not saying I even have enough power to throw it. It's a speed 13. But what I do to compensate, and because I really like the way the disc flies, it's very overstable for me. So instead of throwing it down like this with some hyzer, I take the angle up and maybe even give it a little bit of any anhyzer. And that way, along its flight path, it straightens out and then fades off a little bit to the right. And in this case, it got me straight down the fairway. Don't listen to anybody else about what discs you should throw. Throw what feels comfortable for you. Is this Crank SS theoretically too much disc for me? Yeah, it is. I can get maybe 300 feet. That's pretty much my furthest drive. Now that's on the flat with no hills or anything like that. Close to 300 feet, but Still, 
there is a use for discs like these in my game. So you have to figure out what works for you. But again, if you're having trouble getting these discs to turn over, then scoot down in the number. That's the first number you see in the disc. And the lower the number, the easier it will be to throw. Made the birdie putt with my very trusty 86 putter. On to the next one. Okay, number nine, uphill and 265 feet from the intermediate tee here. It's tough. You got to get around this big tree right here. And uh, once you do, then it's fairly open and uh, still very tough. Throwing uphill, remember to throw a bit higher than usual. Good shot with my Latitude 64 Halo Air. Made it up the hill and certainly right in the middle of the fairway. Still quite a distance from the Silver Basket there, but eh, let's call it 55, 60 feet, but nothing in our way. Okay, so wrapping up number nine, started with the Halo Air. And this is a very overstable disc, so I compensated for that, for my power and my throwing style, with some Anheuser. And I was able to get it to go around the problem tree and go ahead and straighten out and then just curve back a little bit, giving me a nice putt line to the basket for the birdie with the Cobra. You can throw an entire course with a disc like the Cobra, so Get yourself a good mid-range that you're comfortable with, and it'll be a staple of your bag, trust me. Also check out my Cobra video elsewhere on YouTube. In this case, whether I throw it with backhand or forehand like I did in this case, you could even forehand putt with it, which is a very straight flying disc that you just aim at your target, give it some power, and as you saw, straight for the basket and right in. I've made some great aces with this disc before, and some great birdie putts and approaches as well with it. It's very versatile. Everyone should have a good mid-range that they're comfortable with throwing. And in my case, I love this Cobra. Okay, and there you have it. My Fall Colors Disc Golf Tutorial. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out all of my other disc golf videos. Also check out my Drive and Ivan car review videos if you like cars. Lots of cool exotic cars too. Also my music videos, documentaries, my literal video for Chris Isaac's Wicked Game. That's pretty funny. Anyway, thanks for watching and of course subscribe. I'm Ivan Katz. Oh my God! There it is. Oh, God!